sorry sir uh, you just give us 2 minutes we just sharing in 2 minutes just a sec you are already on youtube devraj if you have the ppt and can share i suggest you start we are 5 minutes over time okay i believe uh, it is visible to all yes it is visible yeah so good afternoon everyone good afternoon good to afternoon. all our esteemed panelist moderator good afternoon and all the listeners who are present here yeah as you know who we are um uh, i'm devraj singh from uh, electronic sector skill council of india uh, essci focuses on establishing an effective and efficient ecosystem for developing and imparting of outcome oriented skills for the electronic system design and manufacturing industry as you are aware uh that uh, uh electronic sector skill council is uh, uh not for profit organization under ministry of skill development and is backed by uh six major uh industry association um siama elsina aisa ipca met elcoma etc with the financial support from nsdc and our vision is to facilitate world class ecosystem for industry oriented skill development in electronic sector today topic of uh, uh, discussion and uh, topic of webinar is uh, role of uh, uh, is role of automation and its impact on jobs so um, regarding us uh, we since we actually operate in esdm space so uh, this is our strength and uh, presence we have trained so far in esdm space electronic system design and manufacturing space we call uh we have trained over 1.2 million candidates and have placed half of them uh, almost 594193 candidates since our inception we have 175 distinct qualification packs we have over 200 plus subject matter experts 250 plus training partners 13 center of excellences five transnational qps qps are equivalent to job roles uh we have over 3000 certified assessors over 7000 certified trainers and over 4000 plus training centers is spread across the india so this is our strength and uh, through this uh, we impart all kinds of skilling up skilling uh, um, uh, and short term trainings across india so coming to automation uh, which is very important topic automation is increasingly impacting the world of work from last few years and will continue to do so this is already felt in some industries and different countries are experiencing the effect more so than others ai robotics and other forms of smart automation have the potential to bring great economic benefits contributing up to almost 15 trillion to global gdp by 2030 according to pwc this extra wealth will also generate the demand for many jobs but there are also concerns that it could displace many existing jobs analysis involved over uh, 2 lakh existing jobs across 29 countries to assess what the potential for automation may be uh, at various points over the next 20 years and result indicated uh, three waves of automation that might unfold in future wave one they told that uh, it will be algorithmic where we expect relatively low displacement of existing jobs perhaps only around 3% by early 2020 wave two will be augmentation augmentation yeah up to 18% of jobs will be automobile here women could be at greater risk of auto, uh, automation due to their high representation in clerical and other administrative functions and wave 3 will uh, that will actually uh, go up to mid 2030 uh, which will actually focus on autonomy 
where uh, we will see 30% of jobs uh, can be automobile in this uh, in this particular wave here men will uh, be affected more uh, in long run as autonomous vehicles and other machine replace many manual task where their uh, sh share of employment is higher so when considering the overall risk of automation the occupation with the highest probability of automation are food preparators construction and cleaning workers elementary sales occupation customer services which are low skilled or routine ones while the occupation at lowest risk of automation are medical practitioners higher education teaching professionals senior professionals of educational establishment politics etc these occupation are considered high skill so automation uh, will definitely impact the jobs as uh, it is said uh, by various uh, reports and how it will affect uh, what will uh, what will the affect on various job roles this will be coming in next slides so uh, here are occupation at risk from automation you can see uh, right from food preparation construction cleaning driving so where uh, you will see that uh, skills are low uh, the jobs are affected in much larger way compared to uh, the professions where uh, high skills are required so uh, this is how uh, i told about the three waves uh, which will affect uh, the jobs now coming to um, come uh, okay looking into uh, say crystal ball at the future of work things might seem a mess the prediction is that automation is set to destroy the job market you all hear it uh, very frequently humans will be made redundant by robots all this sweeping tech advancement is happening so uh, things will go haywire all this there will be no more akash from accounting people are saying there will be no manish from marketing there will be no deepika in development it will be all computers but does reality uh, mirror this prediction expert in the field suggest not calculating that machines and algorithm will create more jobs than they displace but don't uh, just take their words for it as evidence um, i'll i believe that uh, there are future jobs that are already in the market uh, due to uh, thanks to the automation that is already in the market like automation administrator uh, this is uh, the job in the market automation economist ai trainer business process automation programmer chatbot copywriter chief listening officer is again a job role which uh, got created out of it and a machine learning engineer machine relations manager robot technician so uh, there are so many job roles uh, which are actually coming out of uh, the automation and uh, which will definitely uh, fill the basket uh, uh, where jobs are getting uh, displaced only thing is we need to work upon improving the skills so this is gartner uh, report uh, which actually says that uh, how um, uh, in coming years our jobs will be affected and uh, uh, this particular slide tells uh, new job roles with growing demand so new job roles with growing demand i already told you uh, in fact world economic forum said the rise of machine and automation would eliminate almost 80 85 million jobs by 2025 from the world but at the same time uh, world economic forum also expects 97 million new jobs will be created so overall 12 million jobs uh, new jobs uh, will be created uh, or uh, no no 12 million uh, jobs uh, will be new to the system so uh, it is it is kind of job creation automation is a kind of job creation and uh, third uh, point is it is stress the need for reskilling and upskilling from uh, employers which is very necessary uh, where uh, we as a council electronic sector skill council uh, play a definite role and new job roles uh, uh, are also there uh, so uh, you can uh, in years to come you will uh, hear more and more job roles uh, newer job roles getting added to the basket so in short term the impact of automation may be low for workers of all education levels but in long term our estimate shows that 
those with lower education levels could be much more vulnerable to being displaced by machines. Government and businesses need to work together to help people adjust to these new technologies through uh, uh, retraining and career changes. A culture of adaptability and lifelong learning will be crucial for spreading the benefits of AI and robotics widely through society, particularly with an aging population where we need people to, uh, to be able to work for longer. An improved STEM skill will be an important in allowing people to take the high technology jobs that will arise out of AI and robotics, but soft skill will also be important in making people adaptable and employable through their working lives. So uh, this ends my presentation. Now I'll take uh, the honor in introducing our esteemed panelists. Our moderator is Mr. Kishore Narang. He is a very senior technology consultant, mentor and design architect with organizations of uh, national and international repute in the field of electrical electronics and ICT. He has over 39 years of professional experience in education, research, design and technology consulting. He has over 200 research and design mentees in science, technology, and innovation, and ESDM, that is Electronic System Design and Manufacturing Ecosystems. His current focus is to develop framework, architecture, and standards for end-to-end -end unified and secure ICT infrastructure for smart cities. Our panelists include Mr. Ravi Bhushan, who is working uh, as general manager at Schneider Electric. He is an electrical and electronics engineer and uh, has started his uh, career at Schneider Electric in 2007. In 2011, he moved to Schneider Electric to manage the skill development initiative. From 2013, he led the responsibility for access to energy business opportunity for India. Since 2015, he leads the strategy for industry academic engagement projects and didactic business for Asia Pacific, Africa, and South America at Schneider Electric. Our next panelist is Mr. Pradeep Kumar Sood, who has more than 40 years of experience in the industrial automation domain. He started career with Danfoss and contributed 15 valuable years to the company and joined SMC in 1998, three years after SMC started operations in India. He recently retired in 2020 and presently acting as consultant to the company uh, SMC for the didactic uh, division vertical. Next panelist is Mr. Mayang Gupta. He has 14 years of experience in technology, having worked internationally at multi-billion dollar hedge fund and uh, UK-based in, uh, investment banks. He has expensive uh, experience building complex scalable solution for industrial IoT and big data. Mayank has been instrument uh, instrumental in connecting over 3,000 uh, industries pan India through enterprise grade uh, IoT cloud platform solution for multiple domains. And Mr. Mayank holds a bachelor degree in engineering uh, uh, in electronics and communication. Our next panelist is Mr. Manish Kumar. He has 25 years of experience in collaborative and consultative selling to the Indian and international clients. He has got experience in working with Indian PSU and leading IT companies in India has extensive experience in working with government of India on many transformative IT projects, policy matters, such as cloud computing and public procurement policy. He has consulted many clients on IT matters and service transformations. And our last panelist is uh, Dr. Professor S. Ramanarayan Reddy. He is working as a professor in computer science and engineering department of Indira Gandhi Technical University for Women, Delhi. He is currently acting as head of department, computer science and engineering department. He has awarded PhD in the area of embedded uh, system design in 2009 and MTech degree in 2002 from Jawaharlal Nehru University, New Delhi. He has published more than 100 research paper in various international journals, conferences and published a couple of books. He has published several course development manuals along with the research students and, and are available. Now, I welcome Mr. Kishore Narangji for taking forward the panel discussion. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Devraj. And good afternoon to one and all. Am I audible? Yep. OK. Uh, so I think, uh, first of all, the, thanks to ESSI to give me this opportunity to interact with you all once again. Because see, this is one of my uh, passion to interact with the young breed, young minds, whom I can, you know, 
uh, share with uh, my experience and my thought process uh, and uh, how technology has been moving and how we need to stay relevant if you want to survive in, in this techno-scientific industrial age that we are living in today. But before we get down to our topic, I think uh, we are passing through a very difficult times and uh, I would like to talk a little bit beyond technology. And that is something which is more closer to our own heart and our existence. I like to talk about future of life on earth. Just give me a minute to understand this thing. So the crisis as life altering as uh, the coronavirus pandemic naturally inspires speculation about how it will change everything. And we have seen what kind of changes we have all experienced the last one year. The impact it has had and continues to have on each and every aspect of our lives is in fact beyond words. We may not yet even know how this story will end, but we already know for sure that this pandemic has brought the greatest reversal of our times, turning the world along with its wisdom on its head. So this is our free chance to unlearn and learn again. Let's not blow it. Let's understand how we relate to what is the essence of life, what kind of future we want to design for we as individuals, as family, for our family, for our society, for the world, what kind of world we look forward to. So these are some of the things that you need to keep in back of your mind. Whenever you are taking any kind of a career decisions or decisions of life, uh, you know, uh, for your future. And talking about uh, disruption, everybody is talking today about disruption. And a lot of people are saying disruption is the new normal. Well, disruption is everywhere and the future is really uncertain. No one knows what world would look like even a decade from now. And as we head into the future, we are surrounded by whole lot of disruptive innovation, whether it is artificial intelligence, driverless cars, space explorations, quantum computing. It can be really hard for even the most enthusiastic technophiles like me to stay up to date with all the rapid advances uh, taking place and coming down the line. As we look to the years and decades ahead, tech disruption will be driven by as much by methods and systems as by devices. Normally tech disruption is related with the devices and the products and the systems, but uh, now it will be also driven as much by methods and systems we associate uh, the tech disruption with. You know, The pace of innovation is incredibly fast with new things getting discovered every day. Uh, future trends in technology are very, very diverse. Like some of them were outlaid by Mr. Devraj and, but they are very intertwined also, and they are very promising. They, there are several developments that have and will continue to shape business strategies of different organizations, nations, societies, and then from automation to sustainability, another very, very important point to keep in mind. If we want a sustainable future for our planet, then organizations are adopting to a whole new wave of consumer preferences. So why I'm saying this is that as budding, growing engineer, technology person, young professionals, we need to keep in mind how the industry is moving, how the business organization, large or small, how their values, their ethos, their thought processes are changing. So without keeping them in mind, we may not be really very relevant to them and we may find ourselves really on the roads always as has been the case most of the time. Coming to the topic of automation, let me give you a little background about the automation. So automation, what Mr. Devra talked about is the future flavor of automation. But I think let's understand what automation at, as a nut bolt, as an engineer, as a technician, as a technology person, what it means to us. Automation describes a wide range of technologies which reduce human intervention in processes. Human intervention is reduced by predetermined, meaning that the decision criteria sub-process relationships and related actions and embodying, embodying these into predeterminations in machines. That's what automation is basically all about. Automation, or even you could call it automatic control, includes the use of various control systems for operating equipment such as machinery, processes in factories, boilers, heat treatment, switching, even telephone networks that you use. They're all automation. Steering, stabilization of ships, uh, aircraft, any application, vehicles, wherever we can reduce the human intervention by intervention or this thing. And that is, where, that is where you can see, you can assume that there is some kind of an automation behind all this process, this same thing. Automation covers a whole lot of application, right from thermostats in our homes to a large industrial control system with tens of thousands of inputs 
measurement and output control signal. The, space uh, the spacecraft, the rocket, the airplane, anything you talk about, it's a living example of automation. So how do we categorize it? We cannot categorize it. There are no verticals, there are no horizontals. It is all encompassing. It, everywhere you look up, there's automation is there. Some kind or the other, whether it's a product, whether it's a system, whether it's a solution, whether, whether it's a service, or whether it's a information. There are a whole lot of flavors of automation. Okay, so I'll not get into all those kind of things, but what I'll try to uh, go back, how did we start this thing? Automation actually started a couple of centuries back, but uh, the term, when we started getting used, the term automation inspired by earlier word, which was to be automatic, okay? Or which actually was derived from automaton, okay? Was not widely used before 1947. The, it started becoming popular when Ford established an automation department within his factory of cars. It was during this time that the industry was rapidly adopting feedback controllers, which were introduced in 1930, but the term became popular from 47 onward. And then now, you know, they, they, it has, uh, in fact, uh, followed Moore's law, or maybe even, even overtaken Moore's law as far as automation paradigm in itself is concerned. A few more trends to add to what Mr. Devraj said. And, uh, but let's keep in mind, automation is not all about software. Okay, automation is not all about control. Automation needs some nuts and bolts, some engineering products, systems, solutions, machines, mechatronics, robots. Okay, they may be controlled by software, but there are a whole lot of hardware, there are a whole lot of mechanical, whole lot of other engineering discipline. So when we say automation, it is not limited to one discipline alone. You may be a chemical engineer or a chemical person or a civil this thing, and still you may be, you, be you interested in automation and there's a lot of work in each and every discipline of engineering, of science, technology, society, banking, everywhere you can see automation is there. So you'll say, what do I do? Don't get confused. Just pick and choose what you feel like and then follow your heart into that. But just a good, good this is, uh, like crystal gazing, like Devraj said. Uh, so. Uh, what we are looking in the very near future is robots will become our co-workers. We'll be working alongside with the robots in factories if we are working. From variables, we use those, uh, you know, uh, bands. All those kind of uh, automated products we are going to get implanted in our bodies. Okay, bots, you, you know, you uh, assert apps. All apps will be replaced by the bots. You know the bots. The, it's a, the technical term for robots is uh, basically robotic process automation. Okay, and 3D printing, it is going uh, industrial and within very next few years, it will go commercial. Then AI will all, artificial intelligence that everybody is so bullish about, it will replace most quite a lot of white collar jobs, but then it will also create new jobs because AI is not gonna come out of a you know, blue sky, uh, out of thin sky. Someone has to write those algorithms. Someone has to develop those logics and then embed those softwares, algorithms, logics into some products, some system, some hardware, some this thing. So the whole lot of plethora of job profiles that you can look at uh, as part of the automation paradigm. It's not a domain, it's a paradigm and which is intertwined, over encompassing. I can go on and on, robots are teaching themselves today and things are taking over on a hyperloop you have seen. There was a, a few months back, there was a, uh, first successful trial of the Hyperloop. Okay, then we are talking about, uh, you know, uh, uh, establishing colonies in the Mars and all those kind of things. There's no end to it. So there is a whole lot of scope, but yes, what, what does it mean? We need to skill and reskill ourselves. If you're already skilled, you need to update your skills. If you're not skilled, you need to identify which aspect of automation, okay, you would like to pick up and skill yourself. But mind you one thing, what you skill today is not going to be valid for next 30 years for you. You will always need to update your skills for every five years or so, if not more. So keep that in mind and let's hear the thought leaders about their experiences. They are from different segments of our industry. They'll be talking about their respective domains. But what I talked was not any particular domain. What is the basic, uh, you can say common uh, uh, phenomena uh, or you can say aspects about automation. With that, I think, uh, uh, let's start with the, one of our first speakers, uh, Mr. Devraj, whom, whom you would like to call first. Sir, it is up to you. Uh, anybody? Okay, okay. No, yeah. no it's okay. I, I think let's have Mr. Sooth. Yeah, okay. Uh, good afternoon. 
to everyone. I will just share my uh, slide uh, screen with you. Uh, just a minute. I hope you won't take more than five minutes. So, so what right. we are going to do is, uh, we are going. Every panelist will get as this thing five minutes each. Okay, and to share your initial thoughts. Then we will have multiple Q and A rounds. Uh, so, so please uh, keep it concise okay. uh, within five minutes. Okay, thank you. Okay. Uh, are, uh, is everybody able to see my screen? Yes. Yes, we are able to see that. Hello. Yes, yeah. we are okay. able to see. Yeah. Thank you. First of all, let me introduce. My name is P K Sood. I am representing SMC Corporation of India. SMC is a hundred percent Japanese organization. It was established here in India in nineteen. 98 and we have been in business in india for last 25 years plus smc is a world leader in the field of automation it's my privilege and i thank uh, essci uh, for giving me this opportunity to be among uh, the uh, you know esteemed uh, panelists and it's a great opportunity for me to learn as uh, mr narang said i will briefly uh, share with you what we understand by automation and what is the scope going forward okay according to me now since uh, mr devraj and uh, had mentioned that most of the uh, participants are youngsters so i just thought let us make them understand what automation is all about automation according to us is integration of various technologies uh, when i talk about automation i am talking about industrial automation <coughs> which implies use of technologies and control devices that results in automatic operation and control of industrial processes for achieving superior performance without significant human intervention automation is uh, integrates various engineering technologies like mechanical electrical mr narang was saying this and uh, all the other fields of uh, engineering and then uh, put together uh, offers a solution now industrial automation first of all okay we we now know that what automation is but why we need to automate this is a very pertinent question according to me there are various benefits of automation for example uh, can perform complex activity repeatedly with precision um, uh, reduces downtime improves output quality waste reduction lower energy cost improved productivity and improved overall operational efficiency and economies of scale and the benefits as you can see in the graph on the right hand side uh, you know this uh, it results in improved sales improved profits and it lowers costs it's a great benefit for the industry and uh, this is what we have all to try for now mr narang was mentioning that okay uh, automation uh, is in all all aspects of life but there are various uh, you know uh, levels of automation uh, like uh, uh, in 1947 the level of automation was very basic uh, you know where there are sensors actuators and hardware level 1 what we call it then there are plc's pc's pids then uh, as it gets complex the automation level goes up across organization so these are the five different levels of uh, automation what we call as automation pyramid so various technologies are all shown here if you have to understand uh, the automation pyramid in a different uh, pictorial like what we have is at the bottom is uh, zero basic primary technology for manufacturing or uh, uh, creating things then add to that level 1 of automation like sensors and actuators for uh, unit level control then comes the uh, supervisory and uh, group level control and then order tracking and management and administration goes at the highest level Mr. Sood, can you speak a little louder? We have got oh. a message from audience oh, that they I'm are getting sorry. very low voice. Okay, yeah. I'm sorry. Okay, so now these are the five levels of automation that one can go through. Now I'm going the scope for automation in manufacturing and its impact on Indian economy. I'm okay now. I'm audible. Hopefully, yes. Yeah. Uh, you know, as we all know, India is one of the fastest growing economy. Service sector contributing maximum to the Indian economy. our manufacturing is only contributing 16% whereas in china it is 34% uh, of our gdp and india share in the world manufacturing only 1.8% china share is 13.7% though these numbers are very dismal but this also is a hope for us 
that is the scope for us to grow the scope uh, to enhance manufacturing capacity through various government initiatives like make in india skill india atmanirbhar bharat so our government has realized and they are they are supportive they understand that if india has to uh, be the uh, country of the century then we have to make changes and they are already taking steps so automation uh, adoption of relevant automation technologies can facilitate and establish india as one of the favored manufacturing destination of the world industry needs to adopt latest technologies and knowledge to stay competitive and relevant in the current changing global business environment so our industry needs to adopt the technologies At automation technology has the potential to produce results that can create growth opportunities for the industry now uh, you know that is what mr narang was just now sharing that automation uh, you know there is a fear that automation by automating we will end up losing jobs whereas we feel that the automation will create opportunities for further growth because for us the market is unlimited the whole world can be our market and so there is no no dearth of demand manufacturing sector growth will drive the indian economy and competitive manufacturing will be the key focus area to ensure sustained growth companies which will continuously discover ways to reduce costs and tightly couple all activities along the value chain have a chance to succeed in this competitive environment automation is not only a technology enabler it is a business enabler too and that makes it extremely important to attain profitable growth msme is a large uh, sector in india it comprises of almost 36 million units and provides employment to over 80 million persons it contributes 8% to our gdp and a share of the msme in total manufacturing output is around 45% however our biggest problem is msme msme manufacturing setup faces challenges of inadequate skill, skill manpower and having limited access to latest technology so this is the gap that we need to really bridge if we have to be successful this makes the adoption of automation technologies quite pertinent so now future of industrial automation though we argue everybody of us uh, argues that automation will result in mass unemployment and uh, however we feel that its future looks bright in indian context if we see we need technology to catch up with the developing economies of the world in in terms of capabilities to produce world class products to cater to the world market thanks to automation the factory of tomorrow will be more efficient in utilization of resources like energy raw material human resources and experience so far has shown that automation will not con cause unemployment on the contrary human resources and automation technology will together to create more jobs and more efficient productive workforce if you want me to go on uh, thank you very much Huh? No, yeah. I, th I think that that's good enough. Uh, okay. We we have ample time. We can come back on question and and no, no, no slides, please. Thank you. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. So we have heard what the factory automation is all about. Let's look at some kind of a uh, SCADAs and utility automation. And I'd like to go to Mr. Manish uh, from General Electric. Mr. Manish, would you like to share your initial perspective, your thoughts about automation? Can you stop sharing, Mr. Sue? Yep. Yeah. Definitely. Okay. Yes. Uh, I. Yeah. I don't have slides right now. But no. No. We. We don't need slides. I uh, prefer no slides. Uh, uh, let's go example. Right. So, in fact, uh, I would like to uh, give a little perspective to our young listeners uh, about the automation in the industries. So, uh, we are uh, today. We are into industry four dot o. We call it as industry four dot o version, and we start. when we see the industrial revolution uh, in late 17th and early 18th century uh, that was closed that was a industry 1.0 for us and uh, right from uh, um, industry 1.0 to 1.4 uh, we we have we are we are in the process of graduating to 1.4 right now every era there has been <coughs> loss of the jobs so <coughs> that's very sensitive to the society that is very sensitive to the individuals also but our uh, experience uh, says and i personally have witnessed industry 3.0 and currently i am witness uh, witnessing industry 4.0 also my personal experience uh, whatever thing i have read from the history and what i have witnessed that there is absolutely absolutely no fear of uh, uh, losing the job this fear existed in every era 
but but the experience and the facts say that automation has resulted uh, in increasing the job rather than decreasing the job and as rightly said by mr devraj uh, that uh, uh, there are certain low end jobs uh, we call it as a low end job or different kind of job uh, which will lose its relevance in the market but that's fine that will be there with or without automation also and in every field it is going to be there so uh, my perspective is uh, very very simple that uh, uh, automation we cannot avoid automation uh, it's it's going to, it's reality today and it has been existence since long uh, we have been witnessing various development phases in uh, automation and today one of the things which we are witnessing uh, in our sector is definitely iot uh, we have got expert panel available uh, over here they can they can uh, definitely uh, throw some more light on this particular technology but this these are some technologies which is going to revolutionize the world uh, going forward and my uh, my sincere suggestion to uh, my young folks will be uh, uh, that it, even if you you have done the engineering i will i will just advise you to be more open for uh, future learnings as rightly said earlier that uh, we don't expect that technology which is available today will be available 5 years down the line so an urge a change of mindset to be in continuous learning mode is one of very important factors uh, which we need to imbibe in uh, india per se is uh, uh, is is a growing economy but at the same time india has got a huge role to play outside india also in the world itself and what i understand that world is looking uh, not only looking towards our engineering prowess but also it is looking towards much more beyond this engineering and i would like to highlight uh, within a couple of minutes i would like to highlight uh, certain skill sets uh, which our young engineers young graduate academician uh, should enable our young graduates to uh, to acquire so that they become more relevant in, uh, in in the current market in the indian market and outside india market uh apart from engineering field uh, i i definitely would uh, uh, urge my young fellows to uh, understand more about the quality standards and the quality management system uh, this is this is an area where in uh, a lot of awareness even if we are doing the engineering the quality is embedded part of our engineering uh, uh, engineering endeavors so uh, this is one thing which will which will not be compromised uh, anywhere across the world so we should be aware of the quality standards and different quality management systems in whichever field we are uh, we are pursuing our careers so that is one of very important factors and i would like to highlight it and underline it and that is where we will be uh, 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 some more focus is required Uh, second is uh, which is not of course an engineering stuff is we uh, uh, the health and safety standards world is taking notice of the health and safety standards uh, uh, nowadays and uh, we have to be uh, very uh, very cautious of the fact that these standards uh, we should imbibe ourselves project management skills the environment standards and the social cause so these are the factors uh, which definitely Uh, beyond our core uh, core competency we should go ahead and we should try to understand and grasp some of the expertise and uh, some of the competencies in this areas apart from the uh, uh, communication skills and verbal skills that goes without saying uh, even if the knowledge of the additional uh, language is also also very important and uh, last but not least uh, uh, the personal grooming the body language uh and and the acceptability the capability to work within the team uh appreciation towards the innovation our keenness to do the innovation these are the traits which uh, which we should definitely try to imbibe ourselves that will help in our uh, growing career and ever changing field that's all from my side mr narang i'll be happy to uh, no i think that was that was very very pertinent very succinct and very brief thank you very much so i think now i think uh, we have heard two large organizations uh, perspective i think i like to go through a, a young professional relatively young not that young mayank can you we have your perspective you being a uh, an msme from the industrial iot we're using all latest technology and 
uh, doing things with your own hands, right, from designing to manufacturing to field deployment and operating and maintaining. I would like to hear your thoughts, Mayank. Mayank, are you there? Yeah. Uh, thanks, Mr. Naran, for give us, giving us the opportunity to... Yeah, can you... Am I audible? Yes, very much. Thank you. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Thanks a lot for giving us the opportunity to be on the panelist. Uh, since, uh, you know, at M2M Logger, we are providing industrial IoT services. We are an MSME and, you know, we are particularly catering at industrial automation and industrial process, intelligent process automation. I, I see that automation should be looked as a natural progression. It has been there. It will be there all the time. It is a feedback that, you know, pushes us as a community to continuously perform better. As Mr. Mr. Devraj mentioned, automation is adding up uh, a lot of new jobs in the mix. So, you know, the, the young people, and they should not have uh, this uh, fear in their mind that, you know, they're going to lose out on the jobs. I do agree that these new jobs will require uh, special skills. Uh, and, uh, you know, but they will be evenly spread out uh, across the job pyramid. Uh, and, and, you know, if you look at evolution, then human brain, it specializes, it adds on. We don't want to do the same job we were doing 40 years back. So we have to specialize. Uh, as, as, uh, as you mentioned, you gave an example of uh, telephone exchange. Uh, I'm, I'm very sure that back then we used to have... Uh, manual telephone exchanges and then this uh, automated telephone exchange came into the picture, then people might have had a uh, job hysteria that, that they will, they are going to lose, lose their jobs. But, you know, if you look at the market scenario, I'm sure that telephone network has added more jobs to the industry than automation would have taken back. Now, if I specifically talk about, you know, what we do and, you know, what sort of um, challenges that we are looking at, so we are monitoring pollution, energy efficiency, and, and I see that IoT uh, itself is opening up a lot of jobs uh, to the uh, industry. Uh, there is enormous amount of data that we are man managing. There is device health data, there is operation data, there is calibration data, and everything has to be kept up and running. This requires uh, human interaction. You know, all of it cannot be automated. Uh, there has to be somebody who's gonna automate those processes. There's gonna be somebody who's gonna be on the field and you know he's gonna look at uh, issues, who's gonna sort out issues. So you cannot take out you know human angle from automation. Automation can you know never rule out that there will be no human intervention at all at any given point in time. I, I see that there are a lot of specialized skills uh, that, that are going to be in demand. Uh, we will need specialized expert field technicians, people who, you know, who have one special skill, but then they have to look around the problem. They must have multiple skills. Similarly, technicians from, uh, you know, support technicians, we, we need to, as a, I think in India, we need to have a world-class PCB designers and fabrication system. If we have to, you know, compete with uh, China or elsewhere, uh, this is something that I see is missing and it's, it's something that young professionals can get into because uh, world-class PCB designing doesn't really mean that, you know, you just go and take a high, high end software and start designing PCBs. There are a lot of EMI, EMC and all those quality uh, cons considerations that you have to take into the picture. As Mr. Manish said that, you know, professionals, they, they have to factor in quality when they are talking about jobs. They have to factor in that thing. Um, now, what I'm trying to say here is that these job profiles might require one prime day scale, but as, a, as an individual, uh, the professionals have to have more than one prime day scale. Uh, because that is what is going to make them rock stars and industry survives rock star employees. They, they you know, go ahead with that. Um, because we are more, more into technology, I can you know, only uh, take example of STEM sector. Uh, no, it's perfectly there were a lot of roles that were not there, but they are required now. Uh, so 
I think uh, the the professionals should always understand one thing: right skill will always be in demand. Um, you should never never think that there are no jobs or there are there are going to be job losses. Uh, I've seen at least two cycles of recession. Uh, there has never been a point wherein uh, there were no jobs in the market. If you had the skill, then people was to, you know in companies will always will were always looking for you. Absolutely. But what importantly, what uh, young graduates entering into the job market should remember is they should introspect and ask themselves: Are they up for the job? Did they do engineering or uh, their uh, technical, uh, uh, you know, academia because they wanted to do it? or they were forced to do it or they just followed their friends so do they have the right skills and if not what skills they need you know to fetch the job that they are aiming for because see if you don't have skill then you are missing out the whole purpose then the job market will look very gloomy everything will look dark you might just end up in a good position because of sheer luck but that doesn't you know that's not what industry is looking at that doesn't work out for anybody india has a very uh, you know good youth potential and we need focus efforts at academia level as well you know we need to train these budding up professionals with industry focused practical learnings what industry is witnessing right now if is huge influx of fresh professional professionals but they have to be retrained and they have to be polished to become some valuable coordinate you know contributors when i when i say retrain uh, you know the the experience that we get from the new interviews or in you know, trainings is that they all they have is theoretical knowledge and they they forget what they learned in first year till the time they come out to the uh, final year and they are missing out on basics see polishing uh, uh, a a hello 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 i think we lost mr mayank okay okay, okay. Uh, i think now mike um mayank you seem to be frozen so i think it's okay good enough right now we'll move on to the uh, next panelist and before uh, so i think i'll keep dr reddy for the last because he's an academician uh, in uh, so we like to go to mr ravi bhushan uh, from schneider another large mnc to see what kind of uh, perspective uh, he would like to share on the automation and its uh, future uh, mr bhushan can we have your perspective please yeah sure thank you mr naran can you hear me yes very much go ahead perfect thank you so uh, of course i represent schneider uh, we are worldwide specialist of energy management and automation and i'm uh, really glad to attend this uh, panel discussion with all of you and share my thoughts and views So in China, we are around 160,000 people worldwide, and uh, we are a company which is continuously innovating and reinvesting ourselves on the topic of energy management and automation. Five percent of our revenues are invested in automation. And if you look at, uh, in my view, uh, in the industry or in the business that we belong to, uh, in automation, in in energy management. uh we stare at a very big issue a big challenge uh, uh, which is uh, in the next 40 years around uh, the energy demand is going to increase by one and a half times uh whereas we have to reduce the carbon dioxide emissions by half in the next 40 years so we have to ensure that our systems become more efficient almost three times it's uh, simple mathematics and if you want to make our systems uh, efficient by almost three times we have to embrace automation we have to embrace new technology uh, we have to uh, bring in the new changes that are happening in the iot space uh, and if you look at our business conventionally was more operational technology driven businesses but uh, the advantages of automation and iot is if we combine operational technology together with information technology uh, we are able to create energy and process optimization uh, which makes our systems more efficient so we have no other choice but to embrace automation and of course since we are embracing automation we are uh, thanks to which you know our systems are becoming more efficient uh, it leads to new new uh, skill sets which are required in the market 
and uh, of course uh, previously a lot of panelists have spoken about automation and the impact that is have you know having uh, i will just want to make crisp uh, feedback about as an industry what are the different roles that we are looking at and uh, uh, what we are trying to do to bridge this uh, speed at which innovation and technology is driving towards automation and the gap that remains for skilled manpower and skill uh, you know demand for skilled manpower uh, thanks to the uh, the automation that is happening in our industry uh, so of course uh, at schneider electric we strongly believe that whatever technology that we develop or work we need to bring it back into the, at the center of uh, humans so we want to plan the technology that we are evolving in automation or in iot uh, and bring bring it back into the center of uh, humans and the workforce and skill manpower so that is why schneider has been continuously engaging itself in industry academic relationships uh, and we've been working working largely on two top trends that uh, we see that the market is evolving towards one is definitely in the area of uh, smart city and the other is in the area of smart factory automation now of course smart city then uh, is divided into many multiple areas in which uh, uh, we are working with in, uh, with institutions with training partner organizations uh, to upskill and to create new skill manpower in these areas of smart homes and buildings smart mobility smart water smart public services and smart uh, integration finally now uh, coming back to uh, my views on how the academic institutions and young people uh, need to uh, address the change in this market of technology uh, you don't have to necessarily stick to your departments uh, you know which is electrical electronics uh, information science or computer science you need to move out of the silos of your course curriculum only limited to electrical department or only limited to electronics department because tomorrow's technology is integration of lot of uh, different skills that are required which may not necessarily be imparted only in your department or only in the curriculum or course material of your department so you need to interact with other departments even if you know it may not necessarily be uh, part of your own course or, own, or your own curriculum uh, and of course uh, we are working with several institutions to see how a a completely new course which divides or you know which uh, Uh, removes the silos between different departments are brought together so that you know there is this skill imparted in mechanical in electrical in electronics and uh, together with information science and all of this is combined together uh, to create the new skill uh, that is required for the evolving technology and you know in the at least in our space in smart city and smart factory uh, so with that uh, mr narang i would end my remarks and of course you know if there are questions later we can address thank you No, I think I think that's perfect, Pradeep. And since you mentioned about uh, automation, is yes, you are very right. Normally related with the uh, industry 4.0 and all those kind of things. So we have had multiple generations of this industry 1 1.0 and 4.0 is the latest. I think India is still not adopted, but I think uh, 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 the the stakeholders have already identified some inadequacies in the industry 4.0. so there are already very interesting murmuring or you can say discussions around what should an industry 5.0 be and the uh, industry 5.0 couple of things that very quickly i like to touch upon that you have mentioned industry 4.0 has been criticized with not being able to provide solution for foreseeable future needs it's all about total automation yes but uh, what uh, does it solve our future problem no it uh, the focus of industry 4.0 has been mass production industry 5.0 focuses also on sustainability okay then and how do we as we are adding lot of ict lot of automation and lot of this thing are we looking at the environmental sustainability that is one focus another very interesting focus and which is relevant to our discussions here is that uh, the man machine collaboration so uh, 4.0 is more about robotics and ai but then we are looking at human machine collaboration on the factory floors where basically we'll they'll be working which i also mentioned man and robot will be working together so that is a paradigm which we are looking at so what 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 is the implication now for the skills that we need to understand how to develop those kind of robots operate them and then work in uh, sync with these kind of automation uh, the, the the new uh, you can say robotic uh, systems 
right on the factory floor in collaboration in right homogeneous processes will be some part will be done by humans some that and that is where i think our uh, new job aspirants need to also look at that they need to be relaxed that there's, there's not too much of shortage of jobs you will be you, uh, in spite of a lot of automation there will be a lot of human collaboration also going even right up to the shop floor where you will see a lot of robotization and automation there also. So I think I'll share something else later on. So I think last but not the least, our uh, one of the most uh, co-voted panelists, Dr. Re uh, Reddy. Uh, and, uh, and let me tell you uh, why, uh, so academicians, they are plenty, I could have got them, but why uh, Dr. Reddy before he explains. So uh, he, is, 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 you know, I visit a lot of academy, a lot of institutions, including IITs and ICs and all the NITs. But I think his university or his academy, this thing was the only center where I found they've got a complete design lab, not from today, but from last 10 years. So the, his focus is on skilling uh, the engineers with whom they give them, their, whether uh, BTEC, MTech, or PAD, their focus is on practical hands on training, skilling also. So I think Dr. Reddy, would you like to share something based on what you heard and what you are doing at your institution? What is your perspective about automation? Thank you very much, sir, for your uh, kind introduction and uh, the panel. Uh, I think it is a pleasure to share my thoughts uh, after listening to the, uh, the industrial experts. I quote here, uh, Mr. Manish Ji has mentioned and Mr. Ravi Bhushan has mentioned that uh, the, there is definitely the skilling is required. There is a gaps, but uh, we need to see that uh, there is multiple uh, prospects that how we could be able to improve it. I see there is a lot of efforts for last five to ten years. At least last five years, it has been taken both at central government level and state government level, and even the industry. To name some of that is uh, the Atal Tinkering Lab projects across the country has been taken to give a flavor at the beginning at the school level, where IoT has been introduced at the school level, uh, not at the scale, but yes, to an extent to begin with. And then a lot of uh, other uh, university programs or the departmental programs by the central government, as somebody mentioned that uh, Atal Tinkering Labs, then the uh, Make in India, then DIC Design and Innovation Centers, uh, and uh, even the Artificial Intelligence and Center of Excellences has been started. I could even see that uh, at many school levels and high school levels, the Python programming uh, widely used for automation to an extent and artificial intelligence, these courses were in practice now and introduced now. I think that could definitely boost the, the skill set. And to name being I representing the university and also representing the computer science and engineering department, at university level, many courses uh, in the name of, uh, uh, we just started in this uh, academic session, uh, the Department of Artificial Intelligence and Data Analytics to, to, to fill some of those gaps. And I wanted to share here, uh, though we have five different uh, UG programs, ours is only the Women Engineering uh, University and we have uh, very good students with uh, and almost all the companies do visit here with a package of around 60 lakhs for less last year. So I wanted to name say that the AI department, which was a new department where the students have taken the first priority. So therefore the students and the parents, that culture has gone into them and they have taken the options. Now it is the responsibility of the academics as well as the industry to join together to provide it. I'm sure that industry needs a skill set and universities too need to produce that. But I think uh, like you see in the hospitals, the doctors and the students work together and to, to give the scaling. But I think that is a little bit missing, which I feel so. And therefore uh, we wanted to rather say, you do X, Y, Z, let us do ourselves. So to name that we have been able to interact in the industry and collaboration. I'm sure that uh, very honestly to name it, it's not just only the teaching institutions, even the students has to take part of, if they do some project, can those projects could be sellable? I think being there are many participants uh, who are attending, listening, and they should see this, not just for graduation, they do a project, rather they should be able to learn 
and they should take the employability while doing it and that could the seriousness has to be taken so if they want to do that as the responsibility holds it in the institutions and the government and of the industry that can we provide them such an infrastructure such an uh, guidance to them so i think to name or to fulfill that gap at our university we have started manufacturing in electronics being in a computer science department to quote being that as somebody mentioned to learn you need to earn learn and therefore we could able to design from the pcb to the manufacturing and assembly assembly based uh, uh, to a medium scale where we could disseminate and have the industrial automation the solutions to that so i think that is the day which we are all looking forward so i only urge the industry partners that i'm sure you might be contributing and you need to also pick up the right people and also need to scale it to an extent and definitely i could see the bright future and near future the gaps definitely going to be fulfilled and universities taking those roles uh, and also industry is also coming forward i think we look forward further as somebody mentioning that the collaboration i think the industrial automation when we talk name it so i think i could also see there's very few people have such an opportunity but uh, we should jointly can uh, take the essi as a lead that to join such a kind of facility uh, we are most welcome to have such centers and we could uh, facilitate and share our resources to train many more skills and skilling and i'm sure that uh, uh, the jobs are the diminishing i am sure i am uh, pessimistic that the jobs will be created further and many more opportunities do come of course earlier probably the phds were very limited and now the phds is the requirement for teaching in engineering so that higher standards are coming up and that we all need to encourage it so i am sure uh, with this words i over uh, thanks once again the panel and let's go for the next question yeah, answer sure sure thank sure, you. sure. Thank Uh, so, thank Dr. Reddy. I think, uh, and thanks for your offer to you know work in collaboration with the ESSI and the industry to propose uh, to you know skill more people because you already have some infrastructure. That's very kind of you. And uh, come uh, responding to what uh, in fact um, uh, Mayank mentioned some time back. Uh, so, so now I think we have had a good overview of the what automation is all about from different perspectives and. Uh, one generic reassurance that there are going to be ample jobs. Okay, fine. But then let us go one step deeper and try to understand the job profiles and all that. So, but, but before I start with the panelists, I uh, let me just compliment what uh, Mayank had mentioned about PCB design. So, so, so I think uh, so that's my own experience as a design engineer. So, PCB design uh, is considered more of a CAD job, computer aided design. There are some PCB design software. Uh, you may be IT, you may be diploma. You simply learn how to connect these things and do the netlist checking, do the design rule check, and your PCB layout is done. Absolutely no. If you really ask me, I would give a PCB design to uh, the thing to someone who already understand that the uh, circuit the designing, because different categories of circuit design, whether analog, RF, you know, the high speed digital, and different domain I mean, mixed signal. they all need different pcb layouting skills and understanding so unless you have been through a design understanding you are a good design engineer if i give you a pcb layouting you will simply do a shoddy job and that is one of the major gap area in in skills in india okay uh, that is where we say high speed design or the multi layer board designs even designing layout designing is not being done in india and then fabrication manufacturing now uh, you, you might argue that okay no we have some big plants no we need to bring it to the msme level all these skills whether it is pcb design whether pcb manufacturing all these unless it comes at the msme level the country will not proliferate it for the the paradigm the skill set and uh, all the competence capability will not proliferate at the national level so i think now my specific question to each panelist one by one would be we can start with the same order that we started earlier uh, starting with mr sood that any specific skill sets that you can focus uh, that you can uh, identify our for our young generation to focus on to learn to skill themselves where they might find much better you know opportunities or and what kind of skills reskilling they need to have mr sood can you start with you again mr sood you are there 
am i audible yes very much okay so there are uh, various uh, skills a few i will talk about is sure. uh, you know first of all uh, i think uh, dr reddy was mentioning or somebody else that uh, soft skills communication skills and ability to understand the uh, is is a basic skill communication and uh, ability to understand these are the skills plus in in our domain you know uh, basic engineering is taught but integration of engineering understanding the whole uh, this thing and ability to think through as you were just now mentioning future what is the expectation from that those kinds of skills so then if coming to the specific job roles if you are talking about then automation engineer robotics integration these are some of the skills that are very much uh, relevant for the times to come thank you okay and can, can we go to uh, mr manish yeah sure mr sure uh, in fact uh, you know, the industry or the segment in which we are operating uh, what we find uh, there is a huge amount of uh, uh, lack of skill sets as far as uh, data is concerned anything which is around data because data is exploding uh, hugely uh, with all this innovation coming up uh, uh, you can we can go to the moon we can definitely see that how data is exploding now uh, uh, these data are not only are exploding this this is monetizing also this is being used for the business also so uh, when when we talk about the data which is being generated by the machines uh, iot has got a uh, uh, as a job to do for for the, for the data acquisition part of it but beyond data Uh, uh there are many aspects uh, wherein we are feeling that huge uh, amount of uh, as far as skilled uh, uh, skill set is concerned uh when we talk about something like edge computing this is a generic concept uh then uh, from edge computing there is something known as communication also uh, one of the very important part is the communication front uh, uh the new technologies which is going to come up uh, right from 5g uh we, we're talking about lora technologies narrow bands uh how how the iot is going to communicate uh, we are finding a short of skill sets uh, uh, in that uh, arena so so the communication part is also blowing up huge uh, uh, apart from the it and then third comes to the uh, cloud side uh, uh, the cloud computing uh, part of it developing an algorithm or using an algorithm uh, existing algorithm to to your own advantage uh, to the advantage of the data is is another skill set so uh, uh, i would stress upon a very strong foundation of uh, physics uh, mathematics and uh, uh, analytics especially the statistics part and a job which is uh, related uh, around the data science and when data is exploding uh, your favorite subject mr narang uh, about uh, about the security part uh, the security of the data is also one of the important things where we are finding a lot of uh, short uh, uh, shortfalls in the required is requisite skill sets so these are the four, four points which is uh, four uh, uh, specific skill sets uh, uh, which i would highlight uh, where we can see a huge amount of scope going for great thank you okay going to mayank uh, you have been an industry iot i think nobody talked about iot as a automation paradigm why i'm surprised iot is all about automation isn't it and we did not yeah. we did not even talk about it uh, so mayank you being in the iot and industrial iot can you talk about what kind of skill set uh, now going further more because that time your uh, i think there was some problem yeah, with yeah i got dropped off because of network yeah no problem uh, so okay. i think there are a lot of skill sets that we think industry needs right now um yes ict is one of the things but you know in terms of the high end network understanding you know on the top of line 5g and all those things is one thing but i feel industry or the field operators or or, or the engineers they lack basic understanding when it comes to you know putting the device in field and then just trying to figure out how to get the data out because they don't know where the firewall is blocking now these are very basic things that you need to understand you don't need somebody 
to to be there and then to spoon spoon feed you how the gprs things work and how to troubleshoot the whole thing one of the major things that i feel is lacking is because they don't have a 360 degree view or they just lock to their own departments they just don't think through the problem you have to think out of the box if you are stuck in a problem then individuals have to grow their skills have to go grow their mindset that you have to think out of the box if you are stuck in a problem because that that is how you going to resolve and you going to grow as an individual okay and any, any other point no that's all. okay then uh, moving to next uh, mr bhushan your thoughts okay so, so for us uh, we have around 23 factories in india and uh, many worldwide and uh, mm-hmm. a lot of our factories are uh, automated you know, they uh, they are integrated with industry 4.0 solution and we in mm-hmm. our own factories see a lot of new roles job roles that are coming up which we have not seen in the past you know to name some of them we have profiles now required profiles in this area called as a factory automation engineer a digital mm-hmm. manufacturing engineer a predictive maintenance engineer uh, then we talk about or augmented reality specialist then addictive manufacturing engineer we talk about digital design engineer uh, we talk about cyber security engineer so these are a lot of these profiles did not exist in the past and these are now in demand for new jobs and uh, when we see you know applications coming up one of the biggest challenges that we we face is uh, engineers uh, or technicians that come to us uh, first of all they have not had the world of practical experience so you know they most of the time have not engaged with operational technology and then the second level of challenge is uh, our need with all these profiles is to then integrate operational technology with the information technology so uh, talking of uh, communication talking about uh, data the analytics uh, and uh, managing the digital space of uh, uh, all the operational technology all our equipments that today communicate with each other uh, we uh, at one site able to manage uh, multiple uh, data coming from different factories different locations so either looking at for an engineer from a design perspective point of view and also for a technician and operator from uh, installation commissioning and at both you know from the ot as well as it level so these are all skill sets that needs to be developed eventually over a period of time these job roles are already out in the market and we see it for ourselves with our factory uh, so yeah i think uh, our advice to the young children would be uh, young students would be that uh, they need to uh, both first a uh, focus on uh, understanding practical exposure to operational technology uh, when i say operational technology to equipment real equipment to industrial equipment uh, and then second of course you know to be able to always look at the side wherein how they will inc- integrate or communicate these equipments uh, and combine them together with information technology or with the world of iot so they need to uh, skill themselves on both the sides understanding the equipment by itself and then of course how Uh, the equipment could work in combination with iot or information technology thank you great thank you thank you mr bushan that was interesting okay dr reddy again once back to you <coughs> yeah. so so what no with you i have a specific question because you have been teaching a lot you've been training people so any any other aspect that you might or might not be even tra- being able to treat because uh, teach because of your curriculum limitations and and whatever but you think that uh, somehow or the other these are the skills that we they need we need to develop in these young kids to become really uh, useful or less, less sought after uh, te- technology people whether they are technicians engineers or whatever phd's or whatever uh, let me say about uh, i also represent a director of etl labs private limited i wish to see this what industry actually faces the problem uh, how am i able to first address rather uh, coming to the classroom and ask my students to do so so i have practical experience last 3 years uh, being a director uh, and we have a uh, two customers in uh, greater noida for predictive maintenance production production monitoring i was happy to oh, say wow. that the products that we have done here has been providing the solution for a big automation so sir i just want to know that can we have such kind of scaling done at uh, multiple places in bottom of the pyramid in the in- educational institutions so i teach predictive maintenance i teach uh, agricultural iot i teach them uh, the industrial iot and we have a specialization in data analytics uh, data management uh, security we have a mechanical and automation department to name as you asked me to share at our own students 
all our students get multiple uh, jobs with average package of 20 lakhs per annum. I'm talking about wow. the average package. Wow. So the highest package was 60, but I'm not worried about our own students, but I'm worried about yes. our country, uh, how this is uh, uh, scalable to the bottom of the pyramid. And I'm sure 90% of UG engineers So how am I, I mean, that is the biggest reason why we are trying to address. So to have a solution to that, I'm sure the big panel is here and uh, ESSI is there. Can we have offered some of the courses, design a, a maybe short-term course, and we as a university and representing as a stakeholder and we as the ESSI as also is one of the stakeholders, can we have a pilot packet of uh, launching, let's say predictive maintenance for a diploma course? I could see some of the questions that diploma candidates are asking in the chart today. Sir, I am a diploma holder. What kind of automation jobs I can able to do? I'm sure that if a, a candidate is a diploma, I'm sure they can be trained to a level where some kind of automation they can be able to do it. So I think uh, uh, I may request the further uh, the panelists be you are uh, having this and also Mr. Devraj to lead further and uh, provide some outcome of this particular seminar to have some uh, job roles created and we can able to launch it as a a two credit course or a short term course and we can share our facilities uh, and i'm sure that industry can able to collaborate and not just i'm talking about our own own uh, university i see this all other university students are also our own children so with that spirit uh, should be uh, taken a practical uh, note uh, to deliver some kind of some kind of output from this particular event I'm sure you could see some of the questions which we are arising from absolutely, the participants. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. And, no, so, and, and, and I think, that's, yeah. I think being the big panel here, I'm, I rightly mentioned and put our own thoughts together and can launch one small program. Let you people could be sharing some thoughts. Can they have a practical aspect at least begin with that and can be able to uh, scale it at, uh, I'm sure the ESSI is uh, able to have across many centers. So it could be taken uh, properly. Absolutely. So I, I, you know, uh, I, I think you remind me of those uh, summer workshops that we have been having for last yeah, 10 years. Course, yeah. And you, uh, so, so I think Dr. Eddie has a very interesting thing for last 10 years. He's been running summer workshop for all engineering students from any, any colleges all over India. Okay, from whether first year students, second year students, but embedded training, mobile, uh, this thing, uh, computing, a lot of interesting uh, topics as workshops, uh, uh, summer workshops, you can say, summer schools. And uh, just to give you the background, I, 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 so I yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, I think, uh, I mean, I came from the industry uh, being a, uh, I did my diploma in electronics. I have seen a, pra I, I just done my graduation while working. So I learned Absolutely. the practical aspects. And really, I, 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 being a teacher, I feel happy today where I correlate and solve the problems. And, and I'm sure uh, that happiness really makes me to continue further. Uh, but one of the major uh, thing is that we need to scale that, sir. And uh, unless we scale it, this kind of provision to many people, it could be a problem further. And the biggest other issue is that we also need to train the uh, the teaching community, the faculty members, Absolutely. and the infrastructure. Say, for example, you know, as Naren sir really mentioned that uh, how many uh, universities could able to manufacture at least a product in electronics. As Mayankji has mentioned very rightly that we need a design engineer of PCB design. I'm sure that let's say even a PCB is designed, we should have the infrastructure to name, to program those missions which we are all importing from China. Can't we have, uh, can we have one small program where we develop it to this particular event? And I'm sure that we at the university will be very happy and we have various other projects from central and state and also from the industry. I'm sure this is one area which we could definitely do a good job. Absolutely, absolutely. And, uh, and, and, and I also want to mention, sir, we, I'm sure this kind of students we get it uh, in the summer six months, if you really give them the right inputs, I'm sure we don't have any crunch and uh, uh, the lack of skill set and they are very enthusiastic and they learn and even the early stage they can able to do things very better when we have so much of innovation and creativity but only we are not able to harness because of lack of infrastructure it is one thing and even lack of skilled people I'm sure that uh, the industry who has a skill set could not able to spare much time to the academics probably some of all the academicians may not have that skill set which the industry 
as it needs it. And there, that is one of the gap we should also need to address. And Absolutely. probably to begin with, we are, as a, a university representing, I could definitely extend my collaboration and cooperation if you are coming forward. And I will lead it, we can launch a program as a pilot. Absolutely, thank you very much. And, and by the way, just for the, uh, for the students who are listening to this, let me give you the background of Dr. Reddy. Dr. Reddy was a diploma holder doing a job of servicing, repair and all those kind of things in electronics. From there, he graduated, he did his PhD, and today he's a, uh, he's a head of department of computer science department in one of the leading Delhi universities. So you see, diploma is not a limitation. It may be your first uh, education, uh, you know, quali qualification. So do not get disheartened. It is up to you what kind of a future you want to carve out for yourself. So uh, think about it, what do you want? And, uh, and the way I think I would like to tell you is that very simple. Uh, do not get worried about jobs. What kind of jobs and what kind of skill set? Look at uh, look into yourself and see where would you like to see yourself ten years from now, twenty years from now. What kind of a profile? Okay, and then trace back, reverse engineering that. Okay, for to do that, this is the kind of skill set I need to have. And today I'm here. How do I carve my path from here to my destination goal ten years later? You will be able to find a path. Where there's a will, there's a way. Whether theory, practical, where you set your mind on you'll be able to acquire skills irrespective of whether there are uh, any this thing or not. Like, uh, you know, he used to uh, come to me when he was doing his PhD for industry guide, guidance. You know, I was his industry guide while his PhD, he was doing his PhD. But uh, then there are very few people like who go from diploma right up to the PhD and then now he's into academy and, and at the one of the top level and still remember, he has not forgotten his roots. That is the reason that he's collaborating with industry. He understands because he has worked with his own hands. So that is the kind of temperament we need to build in our Indian uh, technical technology community and technical community that we believe in working with hands. And there's no shame. There's a dignity of labor. Today's engineer, they have turned into clerks basically. Okay, but uh, coming back to the skills that we were talking about. So uh, some of the skills that I would like to talk about since everybody has talked this thing. See, whatever automation you may talk about. Okay, in, uh, uh, you need some basic competencies. Uh, remember always. Okay, if you are not a pure software person, then you need some basic electrical and electronics fundamentals, including but not limited to sensors, analog, power, RF, because all these, and then how do you, you know, uh, the products have to be compliant, certified and all that. Okay, the hardware design, uh, if, you, if you are into hardware design or testing, assembly, well, the, the quality control, which has been already highlighted. Okay, in-depth understanding of different communication technologies, protocol standard, whichever based on whatever kind of product communication module you are going to use. Because communication today is one of the critical component or the essential component of any automation system. It has to communicate one block to another. Data has to go from one, one machine to the cloud or to the, some uh, edge device or to gateway or wherever uh, you can say. Communication is a very important part. Then you also need to, as all, so data analytics software has been already mentioned. But now let me also tell you what we are missing. We are actually missing the complete system, design system, understanding products, understanding uh, and reliability and compliance issues. How do systems work in a reliable manner? Reliability in nearing. Reliability in nearing is not taught anywhere. So how do we say automation? Reliability is very important. You know, today I'm a reasonably successful design, uh, design engineer. You know why? Because the first of the few system, uh, system which I designed, they were industrial automation system where we, you know, we have to do like design a system and fix it and forget it. It should not come back to you for repair. There should not be any fault in the field. So uh, how, once you, so you need to de uh, design those kind of products and that there's a total reliable, they get fix and forget. Mission critical product systems you do, if they fail, you had it. So how do we bring that kind of understanding temperament in whatever we do, hardware, software, communication, whatever part you are doing, it doesn't matter at all. Then uh, uh, some skills, uh, okay. Sorry, uh, um, we uh, are running out of time and uh, we have a uh, few questions from- uh, I'm, 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 I'm going to leave that and uh, yeah, can I conclude? Sure, sure. Uh, or, or should I interrupt right now? Should I stop here or can I conclude? You can conclude and thereafter take uh, those questions. 
I know that. I'm, I'm just waiting for that. If you allow me to conclude, I was going to that only. Thank you. Sure, sir. So, so uh, some of the aspects, uh, as we already mentioned, technical drawings and uh, computer aided design. These are skills where will always be needed. Okay, assembly and packaging, app application, appliance protection case, reliability and this is I just mentioned, thermal management, cooling, electromagnetic compatibility, recycling requirement, environmentally, uh, environmental friendly aspects. How do you, do you understand? And then for those data analytics and uh, all those AI enthusiasts, uh, let me tell you, even if you want, you think uh, you, uh, you can do all those things by simply doing a uh, BTA computer sciences or IT, you cannot do it. Why? Because even for doing any AI ML, uh, uh, any sensible, any reasonably okay AI ML kind of algorithms, uh, you need to have a very, very good grip on linear algebra, probability and statistics, multivariate calculus, design and analysis of algorithms, random processes, which is also called advanced probability, and also if possible, Hmm? discrete math and graph theory without the understanding of them. These are only taught at the master's level. And that too, not very many students take up these subjects. Unless you have really understood these subjects in depth, do not consider an, a high-end career in AI or machine learning, please. You'll be wasting your time. You might be simply, you know, using uh, some kind of tools, you know, like TensorFlow, you load some uh, training uh, data sets, run it and fine. That is the superficial level of AI ML. Yes, people are needed for that also. But for that, you don't need to be B-Tech or M-Tech or anything like that. So you need to understand what are the kind of uh, career you want, identify the skill set needed, go for it, and you will get it. And you will always need to reskill yourself. Just keep that in mind. So I think with that, I'll uh, stop because uh, we've been getting uh, uh, this thing to move my audience. OK. So can we have the questions? Or should I? Uh, these are the questions which you sent to me. Mr. Devraj, should I start with them? Yes, I have. Or you would like to? Uh, okay. Like okay. No, no, I have, I have them. Q1, what is cybersecurity? Anybody would like to take a shot or you want me to answer? Cybersecurity, anybody would like to talk about cybersecurity? You are the best person, uh, Dr. Naran. <laughs> okay, no, no, not the least. But okay, so, so cybersecurity is what? So cyber, by the way, let us understand. When you say cyber, do not understand it is only IT. Uh, cyber space is now combined right from device to application device to communication, uh, uh, all the network elements, all the cloud or the server or whatever, and the application GUI or the apps in the mobiles, end to end, the signal chain for any particular data or in this thing is a cyber uh, thing. So cyber security is, you know, uh, securing each and every aspect of the whole signal chain, wherever data, data at rest, data in transit, data in processing, at every stage when data is moving, when you're inputting right from there, how do we protect based on the priority by based on the use case? Somewhere you need confidentiality, somewhere you need integrity, somewhere you need all of them and so many other nuances. So cybersecurity is a very interesting discipline, but very, very complex, okay? Uh, you, you need amalgamation of lot of uh, competences, but again, within that cybersecurity as whole, you don't need to, what you do is, you, within the whole uh, signal chain of this uh, data or signal, whatever you might like information you like to talk, whichever area you are focusing, suppose you are getting into device design, device manufacturing, device design, then focus on cybersecurity aspects at the device level. If you are in the communication, focus on the cybersecurity aspects or network security aspects of the, in the communication network, stacks, modules, and protocols and uh, media. If you're looking at IT cloud or app, Correspondingly, you look at that. So that is what cybersecurity is all about. I'll be happy to answer any further questions. This is a, a little complex domain, but I, I'm happy to discuss if we have time uh, beyond that. Coming to second uh, question, can diploma student also help in automation? I, I, what kind of question is it? I think if you really ask me, automations, uh, uh, this thing, uh, industry, are basically impregnated or over, uh, ruled by diploma people. Why? Ask me why. The reason is very simple. The diploma people are the real hands-on people. Most of the industries today prefer diploma than the BTEC. BTECs are typically because the way our system is somehow as of now, most of them, I'm not saying uh, everyone, most of the engineers, they are more of a clerical thing. They have a qualification, but they don't have any hands-on experience because 
uh, in certain colleges, there is no opportunity to have hands on, and others, uh, even students, feel that is below my dignity. Okay, so uh, diploma people have the maximum opportunity and maximum scope in automation for that matter okay or even design for that matter because you are the guys who have who have already hands on you know temperament you can work with hands you can do the soldering you can do the testing you can do all those things you you just need to upskill yourself you can design also and you can do end to end anything and everything in the in, in the automation okay question number 3 how are diploma engineers going to help in creating sustainable industrial automation yeah okay now sustainable Sustainability is a very interesting and complex paradigm, but let me uh, demystify it in simple manner. Sustainability is durability of the planet, of the environment, and of the business, of the industry, of the product that you are designing. So now, in this case, when you say sustainable industrial automation means an industrial automation which uses minimum automation intervention and still gives you maximum minimum hardware software component but it gives you maximum automation so what you need to do is you do not need to over automate any any product process or system you just need to identify what is the optimum automation that is needed to solve this problem and then use the minimum hardware and minimum electronics minimum mechanical whose carbon footprint is minimum to achieve that appropriate optimum level of op automation that is and for that again you just need a temperament. You need a thinking process. You just need to uh, have a head on the shoulder that yes, uh, and this in the heart that no, I want to do something sustainable. Okay, you will understand. You will learn it. It's not rocket science at all. Question four: What kind of skills we need to implement on ourselves as a mechanical engineer to survive in upcoming technology? I think this is. I'm sorry, I've been answering this question myself because these these diploma questions were very close to my heart. So sorry. Uh, so now I'll pass it on to the panelists. Uh, because see, uh, this is a real problem. Diploma people feel, or IT people feel, feel they are inferior. No, they are no inferior. In certain aspects, they are superior to the B techs of today. Okay. So take pride in that. Be confident. Have your chin up and move on. Okay. So question four is: What kind of skills we need to implement on ourselves as a mechanical engineer to survive in upcoming technologies? Uh, uh let me take a few questions uh, this question at my end sure uh, i think we have a mechanical and automation uh, engineering department uh, which uh, 80 students girl students i think that's one thing i wanted to name here and we've been missing that it's not just simple mechanical it is a mechanical and automation engineering where they do have uh, uh, assembly level programming interfacing uh, and their databases uh, with some kind of programming uh, as a part of mechanical as well. So therefore, they could be able to also have the mechatronics as a couple of subjects, uh, I, though I am not very much in this. And of course, they have uh, recently got a big project from uh, MA, uh, Delhi government for Central of Excellence in Automation. Uh, I'm sure all uh, our uh, girl students have been placed uh, in most of the good uh, manufacturing segment, uh, be it any company. Uh, and also they've been placed in uh, with the software division of uh, with a package around 25 lakhs, 30 lakhs, even per mechanical students, I'm talking about it. So I think uh, uh, it is a kind of uh, skilling within the subject that the student has to have and uh, the practical aspects has to have, uh, especially supposingly if the student doesn't get through the campus, if such students, what kind of skill set they may need so that the industry could be able to absorb or get an opportunity. To address such kind of questions, probably I see there's a, a lot of automation which we have been mentioned. Probably if we could have some certificate courses with automation, uh, industrial automation when specifically mentioning as a industry 4.0, some specialized courses if they can take up, uh, definitely they do get. And before they take up, they should have very clear understanding and to an extent, possibly a linkage with the industry start with at the beginning or be it in a lab so that they can able to uh, see the things and practice these things. Most of the times the students, I feel to my knowledge, they try to get an opportunity without skilling. 
you ask them to do learn and practice and put them there are very few kind of students who want to enter go in a, is uh, in it in that part many times with the fake experiences and they come they wanted to come and try that but i rather doing in that way they can uh, take up some online courses as somebody is mentioning now nptel but uh, i also would like to stress upon that as uh, uh the skill uh, the essi as a lot of diploma or certificate courses and many other uh, forums are offering an embedded systems courses probably they can take up uh, that might definitely help them uh, to get into the automation yeah if i may just add yeah. something on yeah, about sure. it uh, sure. see i i feel mechanical is also a core field when it comes to iot because all these devices they need some sort of mechanical fixture so people should look at mechanical cat designing thermal analysis stress analysis and they have they need to have good uh, knowledge about material science they need to be very close uh, with the production floor and that helps a lot because see whatever you design it has to be boxed into some package that package has to have some characteristic it is going to be installed at some location maybe at a glacier maybe at a you know a, in a desert Uh, so you need to have all those sort of analysis, and these analysis do help a lot because they tend to cut down a lot of iterations that uh, you know any any design would take. So these sort of fields also add up, you know, in terms of IoT. Otherwise, also mechanical CAD designing has a good scope in itself, which is beyond you know my sort of skill set. But yeah, I mean this is something that you can look at uh, in terms of IoT. Last point I want to add one one more point here. You could see recent trends and uh, electronic vehicles is a trend and future uh, predicting vehicular applications and driverless cars. I'm sure that we do not have such kind of workforce as are now. Probably I foresee that uh, some kind of mechanical students with this background might definitely help them, be it at diploma level or at be it a graduation level. Okay. And um, how how about Mr. Uh, I think from SMC, I think you have the automation experience. Uh, what, Mr. Mr. Sud. Yeah, Mr. Sud. Yeah, sorry, Mr. Sud, you are there. Would you like to say something on the mechanical side? That's your core field. No, okay. Uh, so there's one more question. Last before we move on, what are the future and emerging technology? of electrical background students so anything for electrical student i think there is a very pertinent question because automation is mostly uh, connected related mostly with electronics and uh, you know software so i think electrical field anybody would like to give an input on that so so, so i think yeah yeah mr bushan go ahead yeah, so i can take up the question is now and so sure. i sure, think from sure. looking at from an electrical electricity Absolutely. perspective for uh, yeah. so you know definitely we conventionally were a power company and you know switch gear was our main bread and butter but if you see uh, in the future you know we are moving towards smart city and uh, smart factory uh, and mm -hmm. we integrate automation inside it so energy is becoming smart so there is the whole idea of uh, converting uh, the utility and uh, the energy distribution systems and combining them together with iot remote monitoring remote management etc then buildings you know which are one of the world's biggest consumers of electricity are becoming smarter so you know there's this whole integration of integrated building management system home automation systems so these are all future technologies which are coming up in the space of uh, electricity and then of course in the area of smart mobility because one of the key elements that we work on in mobility in electric vehicles is the charging system which plays a very big role so you know uh, how batteries are becoming more efficient uh, how do we recycle batteries etc etc then in the space of smart water then in the space of smart public services and then finally in smart integration so you know when you are talking about energy and uh, distributing energy and uh, making energy more efficient finally when you look at from a city or a campus point of view or a site point of view there's this whole idea of uh, integration so integrating all these systems together so that we can monitor control and you know do predictive maintenance or do analytics on the data to make the uh, you know the energy distribution our devices and the processes to be work more efficiently similarly in the space of smart factory uh, of course you know everything starting from plc drives industrial control motor control uh, scada systems and then all the ambit of industry 4.0 all this is open for electrical students i think electrical students have to stop looking at 
only from the point of of course you know uh, conventionally you've been studying about switch gear and you know about the switches sockets and uh, the electrical wires etc now you need to move to also looking at from complete uh, purview of smart homes and building smart energy smart mobility smart water smart public services etc yeah. absolutely absolutely so, thank you uh, so, thank you. so i think uh, sir uh, i would like to yeah. add here yeah yeah uh, yeah i'm cl- closing only so so one thing i'd like to clarify to to all the students all the all the this thing that uh, uh, please do not so there are two aspects of automation one is the application domains electrical electronic mechanical and all that or the robots and all these software other thing is the technology per se you are an electrical engineer for automation there are lot of electrical components products which will be used in any every application domain so you have horizontal scope also you you can choose to be in the core field which will be irrespective agnostic to any vertical domain application domain of the automation or you can choose an application domain of automation which will be at the uh, at the you know integration level only for with that application domain so there both the choices are with you but all engineering disciplines are across domain they are horizontal if if you really say with that i like to close and hand it over back to uh, essi yeah so i wanted to add uh, to mr ravi bhushan in fact uh, we are working very closely uh, with uh, uh, his company uh, schneider electric and uh, uh, schneider electric uh, has pioneered uh, uh, in electrical uh, domain uh, and smart energy management smart building management domain in such a manner they have uh, created uh, very good uh, coes uh, center of excellences where they impart nskf aligned uh, training nskf is the framework which uh, which is followed for all kinds of skilling up skilling activities in india now this is the single framework where our country uh, uh, is dependent upon for all kinds of skilling up skilling activity so everybody uh, who uh, who are listening to this webinar Uh, should understand that there is a, a very a, a very wide gap which exists between academia and uh, the industry and to bridge that gap uh, in fact uh, uh, the country proposed a framework called nskf national skill qualification framework through which it imparts uh, uh, training in uh, which uh, which are uh, industry uh, oriented uh, you can say training uh, ojt in ojt kind of setup which enables every student to become uh, skilled in a particular domain and uh, those skilled students become uh, the job ready candidates for tomorrow so uh, there are many questions i have seen in uh, our question answer session where candidates are telling that uh, uh, we are diploma engineers we are uh, engineers so how can we get job so uh, getting job uh, uh, i be, uh, i believe uh, you will appreciate uh, that uh, uh, once you are skilled in a particular domain so uh, a skilled person is very much required in fact uh, every industry person uh, who are present here would appreciate that uh, industries are not getting uh, the skilled personnel uh, uh, what they need actually so there is a gap uh, which needs to be filled by uh, skilling ourselves so everybody is advised here to actually attend uh, uh, the skilling courses uh, which makes you uh, uh, a skill oriented person and then uh, you can definitely find a very good job uh, and uh, our we have our own job portal we have uh, our own internship program everything so you can connect with us and uh, you can uh, actually impart uh, the relevant skills which uh, you want uh, in your particular domain and become job ready thank you absolutely so one last shot i like statement i like to give so as you all know there's a lot of unemployability among engineers but all the same if you talk to industry they will say there's a lot of vacancy we do not find good right kind of engineers or technical technical people what does it mean there's a gap between academy and industry and that is the skill gap and that is where i think essi can play a major role by bridging that uh, you know and skilling them giving them those skills which industry requires and that's what i think is size already try, trying to do that and with the dissemination of these kind of things i think we can understand what are the essential skill gap based on your interest domain and uh, you know look up to exercise uh, different programs initiatives or work with pro- people like professor reddy and get yourself trained and skilled thank you 
Thank you. Thank you very much, Kishore sir, for moderating and making this panel discussion very informative for all of us. Uh, actually, there is a myth that, uh, you know, if automation take place in the industry, there won't be or maybe lesser jobs uh, for the humans. There is a fear factor in people's mind. But as you and the other speakers have rightly said that human intervention is required uh, because we are the one who write the algorithm, who do the programming, designing the machines, you know, to do the installation of the machine in the production houses. And also we need the people who can handle uh, the maintenance part of the machine. Machines. So the automation sector is creating the jobs in the market. It is not eating the job at all. Absolutely. We have uh, understood that, uh, you know, it is important. The automation is important to improve the productivity, to improve the uh, overall uh, operational efficiency in the industry. The only thing uh, what the people need to do is to upgrade themselves and to adopt the new skill set as per the requirements, as per the opportunities which are coming up, whether it is programming, whether it is data security or the troubleshooting, they should have uh, the attitude to uh, learn the new skill set as per the technology. So I would like to say thank you, uh, every everybody. Thank you, all the speakers. Uh, uh, Mr. Bhushan from Schneider Electric, Mr. Manish from GE Digital, Mr. Sood from uh, SMC India, Dr. Reddy from Indira Gandhi Delhi Technical University, and Mr. Mayank from M2M Logger for uh, taking out their time and sharing their knowledge and wisdom uh, with all of us. Uh, I would like to say thank to Devra sir for setting up the context of uh, the webinar, uh, you know, sharing the futuristic view of the automation industry. Uh, thank you once again, Kishore sir, for uh, joining us today. The way uh, you moderate the panel is just, just amazing. Your energy, your passion, such an, uh, you know, inspiration for all of us. Uh, no, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone in the audience who have joined the webinar today and the people who have been watching, uh, you know, this webinar on the YouTube and the other social media platform. Thank you so much. At the last, I would like to say thanks to um, Isha and the team for making this webinar successful because, uh, you know, we can see that 400 plus people have joined the webinar today. Uh, before uh, ending up, uh, I would request everyone to stay tuned with ESSCI. Uh, we will come back shortly in the second week of March uh, with a new topic based on electric vehicles. And uh, we will be doing this kind of webinars. We are needing your support to you know, conduct such kind of webinars and to share the knowledge and wisdom to all of us. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you.